First of all, hello everyone. My name is Casey. I am the newest member of the Faunalytics team. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really hope to be able to meet all of you in person in the future, but for now, I hope that you're all safe. I hope you're all well, and it is great to connect virtually. So before I begin, I also want to reiterate why we're doing this video today. Um, it is Giving Tuesday Now, a global day of unity and generosity in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. At Faunalytics, we decided we want to donate our uh, Giving Tuesday Now to you advocates who are working so hard for animals and continue to do so even in these crazy and unprecedented times. So. What we're going to do in this video is I'm gonna chat about some of the challenges and opportunities you may be looking at, and then we're gonna share a few resources and data and insights that may support you and help you weather the storm, so to speak. I wanna point out that there is a lot happening and a lot of things that many of us are dealing with for the first time, um, so we certainly can't get to everything today. So. I wanna remind you that you are welcome to comment on this video, send us a DM, email us, and I promise we will get back to everyone individually today as fast as we possibly can. Thank you. Great, so the first thing I want to chat about is how can we effectively communicate about our cause right now? There are a lot of things happening that's extremely relevant to our movement. For example, there are global calls to end live animal markets or wet markets. There has been a lot of mainstream media attention paid to uh, the ethical and safety and health issues surrounding factory farming. Some experts are saying that demand for plant-based food will increase in the future as people are paying more attention to food safety. And there's been a huge momentum to foster and adopt companion animals with more people staying at home. These are uh, really important issues related to what we do, and we may have an opportunity to leverage them uh, to, in order to help animals and help people think about how they should interact with animals moving forward. But we do need to proceed with caution and be strategic with how we're communicating to make sure that we're truly affecting change. So how do we do this? I'm going to share a few insights from Faunalytics' recent COVID-19 poll. In case you're not familiar with it, we recently went out with a poll um, to learn more about consumers' understanding and awareness of COVID-19 and how specifically it's related to animal issues. So for example, how COVID-19 impacts how we're treating animals and how outbreaks and diseases like COVID-19 are influenced by our treatment of animals. The first thing we found that I wanna share is that only 16% of respondents were aware of the wet market conditions that allowed the virus to jump from animals to humans. A little over 10% of our respondents knew that some animals who rely on tourists for food are going hungry right now due to COVID-19 and the drop in the tourism industry. And a little less than 5% of respondents were aware that thousands of lab animals are dying because they can't be cared for during this outbreak. What this tells us is that our audience is not always in tune to the animal protection news that we in the movement think is common knowledge. If we wanna change people's minds, it's important to remember that we need to make them aware of what's happening right now. So for example, if you are campaigning to ban live animal markets, it's a smart idea to always include a note in your outreach to remind your audience that the most reliable scientific evidence points to a live animal market as the most likely origin of the virus. And make sure you're including links so that your audience can easily access the source and see what you're talking about and verify that it's factual. And speaking of being factual, the second thing that we found in the poll, uh, we asked respondents to read a paragraph where we explained the connection between COVID-19 and intensive animal agriculture. The paragraph that we used was factual, and by that I mean it was based in evidence, we had sources for our information, and we didn't include a strong advocacy message at the end. For example, go vegan or ban factory farming, something like that. And over 50% 50 50 of respondents said that it was logical and convincing. This shows us that now, more than ever, it is critical to stick to the facts. If done correctly, a well-crafted and factual argument can be persuasive to an audience 
make sure that if you have citations, which most of us probably should in everything we do when we're reaching out to our audience, include it in all of your outreach. Add it to the end of your blog posts. Add it to your emails and your web pages. And again, make sure that you are including links and making it easy for your audience to see where you're getting your information from. And another thing I wanna point out is that I mentioned we didn't have a strong advocacy message at the end of our paragraph, but still, 18 to 33% of our respondents said that the paragraph was misleading, offensive, or annoying. So if you are including a strong advocacy-based call to action right now, it's important to remember that some people may view it negatively. That brings me to my fourth and final insight about the poll. Between 42 and 44% of respondents indicated that they would support legislation to regulate trade and agriculture to prevent future disease outbreaks. This is great news if you're already an organization that focuses on legislative change and ballot initiatives and things like that. If, if everyone else, if you are going to do a call to action right now, it could be a great time to point people's attention to ways that they can support legislative action on behalf of animals. So, for example, we can ask people to share a tweet at lawmakers, call their local representatives, sign a petition for a legislative change. Focusing on legislative change could be a very strategic way for you to continue mobilizing your audience. Awesome. That is a lot of information, and I totally realize that. So before we move on, I'm going to recap the takeaways that I want everyone to remember from the poll I just discussed. One educate your audience. And remember, not everyone automatically shares our level of knowledge and awareness about the issues we care about. Two, focus on factual, evidence-based information and be cautious about your calls to action. And three, consider a legislative approach to continue engaging your audience. Cool. So because we are limited on time, I'm going to move on. And remember, if we didn't fully address something, feel free to comment or send us an email or a DM and we will get back to you. Uh, but for now, what I want to chat about is more of a practical challenge that advocates may be facing. There are so many practical challenges we're facing, let's all be honest here, from trying to work remotely to taking activism we used to do in person and trying to shift it online, uh, to trying to reach donors in meaningful ways at a time when many people may not be thinking about our cause. These are all really big challenges. And that last one, fundraising, is something that I am going to focus on starting now. So. We all know that in the United States, we are facing record highs in unemployment and economic challenges. So people that we traditionally rely on for funding may not be financially able to donate to us right now. And those who are financially able to donate to us may be focusing on other causes. So something important to keep in mind, if you are struggling to find funding at this time, just know that you are not alone. A recent poll of 500 charities around the world found that 68% are seeing a drop in funding because of this outbreak or during this outbreak, and a further 97% indicate that they expect to see a drop in funding in the next 12 months. I also want to add that in our COVID-19 poll, we saw similar proportions of people who said they were less likely to donate to animals in light of COVID-19 and more likely to donate to animals in light of COVID-19. So, we obviously have to approach that cautiously because intention, of course, does not equate action. But if there is some truth to that finding in our poll, then we should turn our attention to finding ways of tapping into new donors and funds because they may be out there. It's just a matter of finding them. So how do we do that? How do we get creative and find these things? I'm gonna talk quickly about a Johns Hopkins University study. Johns Hopkins looked at 1,400 organizations in the wake of the 2008 recession, and they explored um, how people, how successful these organizations were in raising funds in the midst of an uh, economic downturn. What Johns Hopkins found was that the most successful organizations raising funds were the ones that adopted entrepreneurial strategies. I want to talk about four of these entrepreneurial strategies and how they could relate to animal advocacy and our cause. First, the successful organizations often focused on increasing marketing efforts. That's probably a red flag because a lot of people associate increased marketing with increased spending. 
But now is a great time to turn your attention to ways of increasing visibility on your organization without investing a lot of financial resources. You might want to consider ramping up social media, see what journalists are tweeting about the causes you work on, and reach out to them. Introduce yourself so that when they start working on a story related to your issue, you come up in their mind as a potential source. Launch a new blog or a web page. These things will absolutely cost time and effort, but a little less on the financial side if you are doing it strategically. Another entrepreneurial strategy to consider is develop new giving opportunities. Many organizations understandably shy away from launching things at a time like this, but is there a new and nimble and uh, you know timely initiative that you can take on that gives donors a reason to give to you right now? For example, a new grassroots campaign calling for legislative change or an institutional campaign targeting grocery stores where people are buying a lot of their meat right now. Or look inward. Is there something that you normally do that you don't necessarily think about that much that you haven't publicized widely to donors? Now could be a good time to do so. The third entrepreneurial strategy I wanna mention is expanding your advocacy for funding opportunities. Maybe this is a good time to check out some of the emerging funding opportunities out there to see how your organization is a fit or could be a fit with a little bit of tweaking. I know that there are a lot of nonprofit organizations and effective altruism organizations that have listed emerging funding opportunities on their sites to make it easy for organizations to find them. An example is Good Food Institute. They have a list of research out there or funding out there for researchers who work in alternative protein. You're going to probably have to do digging and we are not promising that you will find anything, but it is absolutely worth giving it a go and seeing what's out there. And finally, the last thing that I want to mention is building collaborative relationships with other nonprofit organizations. Now is the time for advocates to stick together and tap into those incredible relationships that you've built with other advocacy organizations along your journey. Partner with another nonprofit on a digital fundraiser or a virtual webinar or activity. It's a great way to tap into a new pool of potential donors and audience members that maybe haven't been as aware of your organization in the past. And it's mutually beneficial because the organization you're partnering with can say the same thing about your donors and audience members. We have to remember that we are stronger when we work together. And on that note about organizations working together, I do want to remind you that Faunalytics has a lot of resources as you start to adjust and assess your advocacy moving forward. For example, if you are trying to think about new donors to reach out to, not just people who, you know, may be interested in your organization, but who will be likely to donate to your organization. Remember that Faunalytics has a series of donor studies. We've done a lot of research on who donates to animal causes, what they're interested in, who donates to companion animal causes versus other animals like farm animals and wildlife. We've also done studies on uh, predictors of monetary versus non-monetary donations to animal charities. That could be a good support for you right now. Also, as you start to think about any new tactics or strategies that you want to incorporate into your advocacy, have a look at our research library. See what's been studied about your cause and what's been seen to be effective. And finally, if you want to assess the, the advocacy you're currently doing to see it's, if it's effective, if you want to um, you know, understand how research can help you, learn what research is out there but you don't know where to start, or if you just want a little bit more personalized support at this time, feel free to send us a DM, an email, or also we offer office hours for people every single week and for advocacy organizations. After I'm done with this video, we are going to post a link to a blog that recaps pretty much everything I discussed and also um, has more information about these office hours. But please know we are here to give you that personalized support when you really need it, now and always. Cool, so that is unfortunately all we really have time for today. But I do want to remind you for the umpteenth time that please, you can email us, DM us, comment on this video, we encourage you to do so. If I haven't fully addressed something that you were hoping to hear, please let us know and we will do what we can to get you the information you're looking for. Um, and thank you so much for your patience. Seriously, thank you. Um, 
if you're watching this and you are considering donating to an animal cause like Faunalytics, I do want to let you know how grateful we are for your support. Please know that every cent that you give to Faunalytics goes directly to helping advocates be more effective for animals. And right now we need it more than ever. So once again, everyone, to our advocacy community, the incredible work you do, thank you. Happy Giving Tuesday now. Please stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. And um, hopefully we see each other soon. So, bye.